Now, let's look at one last thing dealing with function. And in your book, they actually introduce you to three different functions. One function that they introduce you to was just the straight line. It was the straight line function. And the standard way that you'll see this is f of x, which is equal to mx plus b. Remember when you did this? This was not a function because of the y, but it still was a straight line. Notice here it became a function, which means basically I'm going to give you something to input here. You'll put it in place of actually the x here. But we have here just a straight line function. You'll always have a straight line whenever your x and your f of x is always equal to the first power. You will always have a straight line. Then the second one they talked about that they introduced you to was what happens when you have the absolute value. And this is the absolute value function. Now, just by the formula, you will know what the shape looks like. If I give you this function, and you actually have the absolute value like this, you will always have a figure that looks like a V. So just by bare, just looking at the absolute value, you know that it's going to look like this. If I gave you f of x is equal to, say, a negative in front, the only thing that's going to happen is still a V because you have the absolute value, but it's going to flip in the reverse way. So we have that. Another way, still dealing with the V, but this time what happens, suppose I gave you, let's just say some variable H. What's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with this is going to move from, this moves it from left to right. So, absolute value tells me it's going to be a V, and it's going to be straight up because there's no negative in front, but this is going to shift it on the x-axis, going back and forth. So that's what happens here. We'll do an example in a few minutes. And then the last type thing that can happen is notice this time is still an absolute value because I have a V shape with that. But suppose, suppose we'll put this on, on the outside, I want to shift it up and down. Well, this then shifts it so that it goes up or down. This makes it so the inside makes it so it can go left to right. So it depends on what we have actually inside that's how, making that occur. Let's just look at one example real quick. Okay, so now I'm going to move the information so you can see it. Okay, so let's take a look. Suppose I gave you the function f of x is equal to, say, the absolute value of x plus 4 plus 2. Right away, I notice something. It's an absolute value. So I know it's going to be a v. But I also know, because I have the 4, it's going to shift left or right. And this is telling me it's going to go up or down. So first, let's take care of the shifting from left to right. I'm going to take the x plus 4 and set it equal to 0. So x plus 4 is equal to 0. x is equal to a negative 4. Therefore, I know if I have a drawing like this, I know that it's going to shift over in this direction four places because I ended up with x is equal to a negative 4. Now, I also know it's going to be a v, but I'm going to go what? up what? Two spaces. So first I'm going to shift 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I'm going to go up 2. And there's my vertex, which is right here. And you can just draw a drawing, because all I want to do is just see, do you know where, it should where it's going to locate your vertex, and that it's a V-shape. And this simple sketch would be sufficient for this particular purpose. So now, notice here, absolute value is indicating to you have a V-shape. If you have a number that is inside the absolute value, it's going to shift it from left to right. And don't forget to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. 
and then if you happen to have a number that is on the outside of the absolute value, you know that's going to actually make your V go up or down. So that's now the second type. And the last one they gave to you was number three, was the quadratic equation, which states basically this. So they gave you a quadratic function. And what the quadratic function was doing basically, if you notice, f of x is equal to x squared. Notice here, whenever you have something to the second power, you're going to actually end up with a parabola, which basically means it's a u-shape. So if I have something to the second power, I know it's a u-shape. If I have an x squared to the second power but a negative, what is it going to do? Basically the same thing with the v, it just flips downward. So these are the three types that they gave to you, which are the three types of functions that you might want to be familiar with as far as being able to draw a, a sketch for me.